Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. February 17th, 2021. It's a Wednesday afternoon doing the Theo Trade video here with the markets ending the trading session massively unchanged. Well, the S&Ps anyway. So uh, for the most part, yeah, they were massively unchanged. The NASDAQ, uh, some slight sell side activity. I mean, can you really read into though about a half a percent, especially when uh, the NASDAQ futures, yeah, they are trading 13,700. And of course the, uh, the Russell, the Russell actually did see some sell side activity. Let's take a look on this Wednesday afternoon at just the markets in general, before we go into uh, some real heavy detail. And when I say the markets in general, one of the things I like to do once in a while is, uh, is cruise over and use these auto expected moves. And I'm going to actually going to start with the IWM. This is the, uh, this is the Russell. So the Russell ETF actually tagged the lower edge of its expected move on the week. And it did that fairly early on in the trading session, kind of rebounded off of it. Now, the reason I'm showing you this in the IWM, so wow, I mean, the IWM has been the hottest product in the entire marketplace. And uh, well, it's taking a little bit of a hit. Is it uh, is the, the beginning of some real sell side activity? I don't know. In fact, I don't know if it matters that much because in a year to date percentage, it's still up about 16%. And I say, I don't know, because when you start talking about like the IWM, that is not the linchpin inside of the broader marketplace. We're going to come to that in just a moment. So again, the IWM, uh, when it comes to auto expected moves and expected moves, this is what the option market kind of depicts some of that risk to be. And you know, the downside expected move got tagged and it literally pulled back right off of it. If you take a look at the QQQ, the QQQ uh, on the course of a week, it's just ever so slightly lower in the week. It actually got lower towards the uh, edge of its expected move this morning place before it kind of rebounded a little bit. Again, as I said, the NASDAQ down about a half percent in the last, but uh, well, definitely not least, the uh, the S&Ps. What are the S&Ps now done in the week? Absolutely nothing. Hence why I'm calling this uh, thus far massively unchanged, which actually brings me though to a very key point. This is something I mention almost every uh, Wednesday, although this is a shortened holiday trading week. Of course, on uh, Monday was uh, President's Day, so we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of trading. Okay, what am I looking at here? This is the expected move in the SPX, the mother of all products. SPX expected move this week was plus or minus approximately 57 bucks. Where are we at right now? Zero. That's, again, why I say massively unchanged. Once again, prepare for some movement. Prepare for, okay, at least, you know, $50, $57 of movement. You know, the reason, again, I want to reiterate this, and I was talking about this last week, and I'm talking about it again this week, the week prior, okay, on a week-to-week -week basis, there is an incredibly high probability of tagging the upper and or lower edge of an expected move at some point Okay, between now and Friday afternoon, which is the end of the week. And that's actually what we call, okay, the prob of touch. Okay, the probability of touching is incredibly high. In fact, don't, don't just take my word for it. All you have to do is look back, okay, at a few in previous weeks and look at the number of instances of us actually tagging the higher end or lower edge of the expected move. Some of the recent weeks... All right, so we'll start, you know, back here. Look, this one's a donut. I started on a week that actually did not touch. We tagged here, we tagged here, we tagged here. Here's a week, no. Tagged here, tagged here. Tagged right down there. Okay, this week, hop, skip, and a jump off of it, it counts. Tagged it. All right, here, tagged it on the first day. Tagged it here. This week, you're less than like five points. Basically, it's tagged. Tagged it here, tagged it here. It just goes on and on. Okay, this last week, I mean, it was close, but we'll call that a big donut. Um, <clears throat> I mean, really, you start looking back and all the weeks I just highlighted, you know, maybe you have three, four at most that did not hit the edge of the expected move. And again, this is something that eh, I'm just showing you right now, you know, on the surface. We could, we could dig into much more depth specifically about, you know, how often do we actually tag the edge of the expected move? And the answer is, as I said, it's an incredibly high probability, 
right? Without going in detailed numbers, though, here you are on a Wednesday. You only got Thursday and Friday left. You have a $57 move, higher or lower, and we're sitting right at the, the central point. So, you know, if you watched and looked at the title of this video, it was massively unchanged. That didn't have to do with the marketplace today. It has to do with the marketplace on the entire week and the expectations that we're going to continue to move. All right. Now, to move on past expected move, which tells us that uh, get ready to rumble, we're going to move up or down almost $60. The next point to be made tonight, the linchpin inside of the marketplace. Now, the linchpin inside of the marketplace is unquestionably. Now, this is the marketplace as it pertains to the financials, okay? And the financials pertaining to the S&Ps. So if you take a look, sure, the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ could start to see some sell side activity and the NASDAQ with all of its sell side activity could start to pull down the S&Ps to a degree. But the entire marketplace hinges, okay, on these financials right now, which have been, without a doubt, a runaway freight train to the upside, okay? And the financials though, right, they actually hinge on what's going on inside of the bond market. Now, what is going on inside of the bond market? One of the first things I want to display to you, the bonds, in just the next couple of trading sessions, these bonds are going to start to be rolled from the eight day to the 99 day. They're not, it's not so much any volume showing up there just yet, right? It's 10,000 contracts. But if you take a look at the ZB, the bonds, the 30 year, this is the futures contract. They traded 670,000 contracts. Just you guys listen, I don't know if anybody looks at this stuff. Or, that is unheard of size. It's done at the last two days in a row. Just unheard of size. Especially like, you can expect that kind of size. Like here, oh look, traded almost a million contracts. That was a roll. And the roll will obviously have some, some larger contract size with it. But this, this is the kind of contract size. And this is, this is exactly the point that I want to make. This is the kind of contract size in the bond product that you only see when the S&Ps are in sheer and utter chaos. I don't see any sheer and utter chaos inside of the S&Ps right now. Now, I'm also going to cruise over to the notes, the notes of the 10-year. Look at the volume in here. And again, everybody's like, well, it's a roll. It's uh, whatever. Come on. Not even 100,000 plus contracts traded on the 99 day. The roll is not in full play. Traded 3 million contracts. The entire professional trading world is firing, okay, full bore into, okay, the bonds and notes right now. It's like Armageddon size. And again, people, you can go back years, years, and you're not going to see that many instances of volume at 3 million contracts. You will around the time of the roll, okay, because again, the roll generates size trade. But the only other time that you see 3 million contracts is again, when the S&Ps are in sheer and utter chaos, and we don't see that yet. So I step back from this for just a second and say, oh, what, what's, what's coming? I kind of feel like at this point in time, and again, this is like, you know, a little bit of trader intuition, if you will. <clears throat> the bonds clearly see something right now. It's not just the sheer magnitude of the move. We saw a huge move back here as well, right? I mean, take a look. The move that we saw just a few weeks back at the beginning of the year, Okay, was just as hideous as the move we're seeing now. And this move actually rebounded. The point that I'm trying to make, it's like the bonds see something before the equity markets happen to. And there's huge capital and you need to pay attention to that. Now, okay, with the fact that the bonds are just rocking amounts of volume, <clears throat> if the bonds do in fact start to head back higher, all right. Now, again, there's a couple of different things that can happen here, and I'm going to take you through some of the scenarios. There is so much size and so much trade inside of the bonds. Do not sit here and try to handicap what you think the bonds are going to do. There's, there's just, listen, with that kind of size trade in there, don't try to handicap like, oh, I think, okay, don't think anything. Just you know, you sit here and go through scenario. There's two places they can go. The bonds can actually rip and revert back up. If they revert back up, that is going to take the interest rates lower. The interest rates lower will start to hammer those S and P's. They hammer the S, or I should say, they hammer the financials, which will in turn hammer the S and P's. Okay, let me let me clarify there for a second. So they'll actually, if these things revert higher, that is the bonds higher would take rates lower. Rates lower start to hit the financials. The financials would then bleed over into the S and P's. 
Okay, the other like path, the bonds continue to come off. If they come off harsh, if the bonds come off harsh, same thing is going to happen. It's actually going to snap the back of the marketplace because interest rates are taking off too quickly. Okay, the only way that this is not going to have hideous or negative implications, the bonds at this point. I believe just have to kind of mellow out. They got to sit somewhere right around this 165. I talked about the 165 level in this weekend's update. If they sit somewhere around 165 and kind of float a little higher, a little lower, marketplace will be fine. But there is, in fact, an incredible amount of risk that all hinges around the bonds. As I said, <clears throat> the linchpin in the S&Ps is the financials, but it's the bonds that are actually driving the trade. Okay, last couple of little tidbits over here. All right, keep eyes on the dollar. The dollar's actually been ripping to the upside in the last two trading sessions. I have been of the belief that if the dollar starts to rally, that is a sign of, again, pending risk in markets around the world. Uh, the last thing I'd want to mention on here, this is a little bit out there, but for those of you that read risk, <clears throat> take a look at the VVIX. Still trading in the 122 handle, 123 handle, and the VIX itself. You may see the VIX. Okay, at 2150. But if you look a little further out in time, okay, the actual uh, volatility is closer to like what? The 26 level. In fact, it's worth looking at the volatility futures. And if you look at the volatility futures, the 28 volatility futures are actually trading just shy of the 26 level. So what are we doing right now? Pricing in degrees of risk, right? It appears that the bonds may see it, okay? It appears that the volatility may see it. The question is, is that about to come into the S&Ps right here, right now? Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.